All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in live on the Rachel Varga Facebook page, YouTube, and if you're listening on the Rachel Varga podcast, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. If this is your first time joining in, warm welcome. I'm a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. I love helping people just navigate being a human, you know, enjoying the process and really optimizing our body, mind, spirit, and energy to cultivate a higher level of health, radiance, and beauty. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. I just love doing live check-ins here with you guys. I went live just earlier today again as well. Please leave your questions in the comment section because what it does is it actually we can bring your questions on live. It's this really beautiful interactive live call with a very special guest, Dr. Jason Littleton. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today and for being on the Thank show. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. It's an honor to be on the show. And I'm really excited. Uh, this is going to be an incredible episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I think, just really going to be a healing message for everybody, especially at this time, for how we can really live energetically and how we interact with people, places, and things and really truly meaningful ways. So you have quite the background behind you. And I really admire people like yourself, Dr. Littleton, for really stepping out and being brave at this time and coming out onto the online space with health promoting information. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Rachel. So I'm a board certified family physician and I am the chief of family medicine at Orlando Regional. I wear many hats. One of my, um, one of the favorite things I love to do, one of the favorite hats I love to wear is that I'm the CEO and founder of Littleton Concierge Medicine. And Concierge Medicine is private medicine all the time on social media, everywhere I go. I really distinguish the difference between private and public medicine. You know, whereas public medicine, as most people know it, is insurance-based medicine. And with that comes long wait times. And sometimes you don't have the access that you want. Whereas private, it's retainer medicine. And you have better access. In fact, all my patients have my cell number. And so we're in constant communication. Um, and, you know, I champion concierge medicine. I founded Littleton Concierge Medicine in 2016. And we have an incredible practice. We take care of individuals, families, corporate uh, clients. I have a lot of executives and CEOs and even celebrities in my practice. So um, one of the things that my practice surrounds is helping people to have more energy to do their life. And mm -hmm. I want people to be wealthy. I want people to be healthy. And I want people to prosper. And I, you know, I, I basically uh, give this message through my practice. Mm hmm. What are some of the benefits of having an energized life? This is a topic that you're very, you know, you eloquently explain this on how we can take actionable steps to do just this. So I'd love for you to share your perspective. Yeah. So listen, when people are motivated and energized to get their goals done in life, you know, they are then able to actually live their destiny and live their dreams. I have found so many people who maybe it's because of what job that they're in, or maybe it's because of what they have on their plate. Sometimes they don't get an opportunity to do those things that they really want to do. They are goals, okay? I don't, you know, whether it is, you know, reading, you know, a certain amount of books a year, or finally, you know, taking on that career that they've always wanted to do, or even traveling to that destination they've always wanted to travel. Sometimes people don't take the time to actually pursue those things because they're tired, maybe with their jobs, or they're tired just doing some of the household chores that they have, or whatever it is. And sometimes that's because of a medical issue, but sometimes it's because of perspective. And I work with people to help them really figure out the routines, the health routines, look at their self from a medical perspective so that they can actually feel energized again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just love that. So tell us about a higher level of care for a higher level of learning. You guys listening might be like, well, what does that mean? But um, yeah, just share this with everybody. Well, you know, again, that has a lot to do with my concierge practice. And when I talk about a higher level of care, it's again, it's about access. You know, a lot of times people have questions and they don't get the opportunity to talk to their doctor about that. Right now, as I distinguish the difference between public and private medicine, 
in public medicine or insurance-based, people usually have 15 minutes to speak with their doctor as a follow-up or 30 minutes as a new patient. And a lot of times, you know, they're waiting in the waiting room and their doctor, when they finally get a chance to interact, you know, is sometimes rushed. They don't get a chance to sit down, look them in the face, relax, take a deep breath. And they, you know, they both don't get the opportunity to have the optimal interaction that they could, like in a concierge practice. So a higher level of care for a higher level of life really means I'm interacting with my clients, my patients. We're sitting down. We're really getting to the nitty gritty talking about their goals. What do they really want to do? You know, and we'll probably get to this later, but I have a story really that epitomizes all of this. I mean, you know, where, you know, I really talk about someone who, when I ask them how long they want to live, you know, mm -hmm. they have this goal of living maybe to be like 97, but I say, you know, I, I don't see you making it to 97. 88, no, I don't know. 70, 75. I don't know, 65 possibly. And the reason I said that to this person, and I write about this person in my book, is because their healthy habits at this time didn't add up to a lifestyle of living to 97. And right. that really changed their perspective. And so when we talked about that, we had an opportunity to recreate their life so they can be on track to have longevity. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And we just had a live viewer say, this is so important. Thank you, Elizabeth Patterson, for, for tuning in and, and being here on the call here. And that is really cool what you what you said, you know, how long do you want to live? And Dave Asprey on Bulletproof Radio asked me that question out of left field. I was like, whoa, I've never been asked that. So right. for my answer for that, it would be goal oriented. I want to see people coming together and loving one another. That if when that happens in this world, I'm ready to check out. It's like that's complete instead of time based, like time goal based, right? Uh, like living to a certain age. So just think about that for a second. It's, it's a really unusual way of thinking about how long you want to live. Right. You know, it's like um, people look, everyone has things that they must accomplish. In fact, when I'm working with my clients, I usually start the, um, the relationship by asking them, listen, what do, you, what do you feel like you have to accomplish before you leave Earth? What do you feel like you must do? And it, the answer varies. I mean, for some people, it is, hey, look, I want to be around so I can help raise my great grandchildren, you know? Or it is, I want to be around because I want to be a world renowned chef. Or I want to be around because I want to hit all the continents, you know? There's some. There are some overriding goals that I believe we all have that when we realize that now that's like the wind in our sails. All of a sudden we feel like, listen, okay, I have to take better care of myself. I have to exercise. I have to eat right. You know, I know people that until they figure out what that overriding goal is, a lot of times they're not motivated to stop smoking or motivated to eat organic or motivated to do things that they know they should be doing. It's not enough to just say, hey, eat better. Here's a pamphlet, exercise five times a week or, you know, stop. It's not enough. You have to give someone a why. And we hear that a lot. And I wrote about that, but I've realized in practice, if I don't help people find that overriding goal that gets them out of bed, and gets them thinking about the next day and setting goals, they will not set the routines and be consistent to get there. And it's so necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, for me, it's living that purpose-driven life. What is your purpose? Why are you here? What's your mission, right? Exactly, right. So, and not a lot of people actually have ever even thought about that. What's, what's, what's your perspective on that? Well, you know, that's the whole point. I realized, you know, again, when I was doing, when we contract, um, contrasted private and public medicine, when I was in public medicine, only seeing people like um, every 15 minutes, you know, I got burnt out. And I, I'm sure uh, my, some of my patients did having to wait and things like that, because on that type of routine, we get scheduled. So we, 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 we get behind and behind schedule. So my whole perspective with that is I realized that if I really wanted to help my patients, I really had to get intimate with them in a way that they realize what their overriding goal was. You know, for me, you know, I'm a Christian and we've, we've, we've spoken about that. 
And my goal is to help people live as long as possible so that they can know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that motivates me. That wakes me up in the morning. I want people to be healthy. I want them to fulfill their God-given dreams and goals. And I want people to feel motivated. I don't want people to feel down. I don't want people to feel anxious. I don't want people to be depressed. I want people to be excited about life. So my whole take on that is my mission is one, to help people come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Two, help people to live as long as possible so that they can be healthy and really feel energized and really grab life by the horns and really do this thing. There's so, so much more peace. There's so much more enjoyment and fulfillment when we have that perspective. Yeah, I'm in complete alignment with you. And then, you know, I just take a step further. Let's, let's look good in the process. Let's enjoy the beauty around us. But at the same token, how you're helping your patients, they can't help but look more beautiful and radiant and glowing in the process when they have that internal glow. What do you think that is? What is radiance, that internal glow, that just like that, that true beauty? Just go for it. I'd love to hear your perspective. First of all, when you are at peace, you know, in my life, when I am, listen, being at peace with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, gives me that glow. So when I'm at peace and when I, um, when I spend time in prayer and I write my goals list, because it's a partnership, I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And when I spend time and I work on my goals, I realize things I never knew that I was excited about. And then, and then I write these things down because I journalize a lot. I have a business coach who also is my pastor and she has a journal called the Success Journal. Her name's Dr. Stacia Pierce. It was just her birthday a couple of days ago and I made a post about her. I write down my goals. I'll journalize. I'll let the Holy Spirit talk to me. And I realize about things that I feel like I have to do in life. And so one, that glow is I'm at peace with the Lord Jesus. Two, you see that glow because I'm motivated to actually get at my goals and do these things. And see, I don't see, there are a lot of things in life that we can worry about. There are a lot of things that we can be afraid about. There are a lot of things that we can get even anxious about. But this is where I do cast my cares on the Lord. It doesn't mean that there aren't things that I have to deal with in life. There are things that we all have to deal with in life, but I can choose the fear and be anxious and cycle in my mind. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? When a person does that, that saps your energy. That makes you feel like, you know, sometimes some people get a headache. When I would do that, get in that cycle of worry, sometimes I would get a headache mm -hmm. or I would just feel so tired. I would feel drained that I wouldn't want to do my to-do list. So when I have, what I've learned to do is cast my cares on the Lord, say, look, you know, yeah, there's some concerns out there, but I'm not going to worry about it. He's fighting my battles. I'm going to focus on what I know I need to do. And I get focused on that. And I treat my body well, eating great foods, exercising. I have clarity of mind. That's the glow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I'm just going to be totally transparent with you guys yesterday. I was really anxious yesterday and I had a headache, right? And so what happens when a lot of us have a headache, we're not going to close our eyes and meditate. We're going to pop a pill. And so if we were to kind of rewrite that script where we can live our lives in a way that we don't need that script, it's just, it's kind of all part of, of the picture here. And this is really important for you guys to hear at this time, which is exactly why I wanted to bring you on. These are heavy times. There is a lot happening in the world. So what tips do you have for maintaining awareness of world events while maintaining our mental health at this time and staying on track with our purpose, our mission, whatever you want to call it? Well, you know, there's a lot going on right now. And uh, I think it's important to have a coach. It's important to have um, someone in your life who acts as a leader. In my case, I have my pastor who's also my business coach. And, you know, um, 
when you see some of these life changing, world changing events, you have to learn how to filter those things and how to, uh, you know, put, have the right perspective. So you don't let those events get you off focus. Okay. It depends on what's going on now, right now with the COVID-19 pandemic, as a physician, you know, I know medical facts and I have knowledge that I can filter things that I see on the news, but my patients may not be able to filter it like I do. So they'll look to me and they'll ask me, Hey, what do you think about this? Dr. J, what do you think about this? And I'll explain it. And you know, in a way I'm acting as a coach, as their doctor, and I'm explaining things on how they can have the proper perspective for this. And I got to be honest, even as a doctor, I look to my pastors and we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago and their confidence and their perspective, they put on me. And so I get confident instead of fearing about how to deal with, oh my gosh, this is going on, that's going on, this is happening over here, this is happening in this country. I see how confident that my pastors are. I take on that confidence and I'm able to distribute that to my clients and my patients and act in a certain way. And that's how I filter it. So having a pastor, having a coach in your life is essential to be able to filter through difficult times. Yeah, I love that. And I work with people in that perspective space lineage as well. And, and that's huge for me also, just to really kind of get updates as to what's going on and how to stay balanced energetically as well. And we're going to talk a little bit more about energy balancing in just a second here. But I really wanted to just ask you, how can we support ourselves and our communities at this time? You know, I think one of the things that you can support your community is, first of all, making sure that your cup is full. You know, a lot of times we want to help, you know, everyone out in the world. Nothing wrong with that. But you have to make sure, you know, are you at peace? Are you feeling whole is are you doing exactly what you need to be doing because you have to look at your life that your mission has something to do with helping others and if you're not focused on your goals if you're not focused on the daily route because your daily routine should add up to a weekly routine a monthly routine routine and so on and so forth and all these goals should not only be making you better but pouring into others and so i think when we get off track because of world events, then we lose focus on what our mission is. And then we're not actually fulfilling our mission, which is supposed to help others. So I think we help others by making sure that we have the right goals as far as what we're trying to do in life. And then staying focused and then participating that way. If we try to spread ourselves too thin, we become less effective. And in the case of myself, if all of a sudden I get so focused on what's going on in the world that I forget that my gifts as a physician and I'm not harnessing my gifts as a physician, then it's hard for me to help people. So that that would be my answer to this question. Mm -hmm. And I know you have some really great actionable steps that we're going to share here that you shared with uh, Dr. Kellyanne recently. And I look forward to collaborating with her um, very soon as well. But what are some of the health benefits of, of energy balancing? What is that? Because a lot of the listeners here, they might think that's a little woo. So can, can you just kind of break that down? What is energy balancing from a medical perspective and how do you implement that in your life? Well, when I, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll rephrase it this way. And when, it, you know, um, I don't call it um, energy balancing. I, I usually tell people, how do you optimize um, your your health for more energy? And I say it that way because, you know, as a Christian, I think, um, you know, when we talk about energy, people can, um, you know, get misled and think all sorts of metaphysical things. I try to remind people that through good health, good nutrition, good eating, good exercise. In fact, I have a formula called meds, move, eat, drink, sleep. And we'll go through that. By doing these things, naturally, you can optimize your physical energy. And again, mental energy is a part of that. And when I talk about mental energy, it's about not worrying, not being in fear, having clarity of mind. Some of the things we talked about earlier in this conversation. And so I tell people that you have to have, first of all, you have to be at peace 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, you have to make sure that you're treating your body well. This is our temple. And so we want to make sure that we're drinking good water, we're exercising. We want to make sure we're getting good sleep, eating organically, okay? And we want to make sure that we're goal-oriented. When we do that, physically, we feel 10 out of 10. Mentally, we're 10 out of 10. Spiritually, we're 10 out of 10. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to break that down in terms of what that acronym that I made means, move, eat, drink, sleep. Because I think if a lot of people grab hold on that, they'll be able to have, um, they'll be able to live at their highest potential and feel uh, fully uh, energized and be able to accomplish their goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so break it down for us. I love that. So meds, real simple, move. What I try to start people out with is five minutes of walking or biking three times a week. The reason I do that, and when I do that, I always get the same reaction. People are like, oh, I can do six minutes. I can do 10 minutes. I can do a half hour. And I say, you know what? I don't want you to do 10 minutes or a half hour. I want you to focus on building this routine in your life. And then we'll stretch it out until 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or whatever. I have found in my practice that most people struggle with being consistent. And if you're not mm -hmm. consistent, it doesn't matter what type of energy, uh, energy uh, or what type of physical plan you have, what type of uh, you know, uh, wh whoever you're working with, it won't matter. So I try to get people consistent. And so I usually challenge people, you know, the first energy or the first exercise I want you to do is exercise for five minutes. For people who haven't exercised in a while, five minutes is a great target. Go jog for five minutes, three times a week. Great. Once you master that and get that out of your belt, uh, um, under your belt, we'll stretch it out. And I usually tell people that the best exercises, especially to take care of your knees, are things like swimming, stationary bike, okay? Um, things like that, that can make a difference. And I want people to get their heart rate between 50% their resting heart rate and 85% their resting heart rate. That's the range, okay? And then they can work on other things. It's always important to stretch. It's always important to even consider, um, you know, weight resistance exercises in your routine as well. But cardiovascular, you must start out with. Eat are the E part of meds is eating organic, okay? Making sure that I try to put people on a basic plan of six meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with three snacks in between, okay? And I want people to make sure that at least 40% to 60% of their diet are the good carbs. Carbs get a bad rap, but I'm talking about the good carbs, like vegetables and like organic squashes. fruits. Exactly. It has to be organic, okay? It's worth it. And people I know, we can be cost conscious and wonder about, you know, should I buy organic this and buy organic this? Do your best. I understand. Mm -hmm. Be cost conscious, but do your best. I grow and a lot. I want, of yeah, there you go. Cheap. Even and that helps the environment. Though. Yeah. And so that's major. That's awesome. I love it. You know, we want to get people away from pesticides, away from antibiotics, away from hormones, things that can disrupt the full, the, uh, the complete nature of the food that you're eating. Because what your food eats, that's what you eat. Meaning what's in the soil, you're also eating that. So we want to protect the soil. And then, you know, I talk about making sure that you get good fats, things like almonds, things like pumpkin seeds, flaxseed oil cold water fish, avocado, these things help your immune system. It helps your skin. It also is a second tier level of energy to help your body feel energized, okay? The other thing when we talk about the meds acronym is D or drinking. I talk about making sure people stay hydrated, okay? Making sure that you at least get a liter of water in a day. What I usually start out my day with, exactly, there you go. When, as soon as I wake up, I drink a 500 cc bottle of water. And you want to end your day that way, um, you know, and you want to make sure that you're drinking good organic juices, stay away from sodas, you know, stay away from alcohol, stay away from, you know, um, I even actually water down like this. So I don't have yeah. like, just, just add water to it because it's so sweet anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, I, I want to get people, you know, the, if you, first of all, our, as we all know, our body is about. 66% water, all right? People get respiratory problems, even headaches, skin problems, hair problems when they're not properly hydrated. 
And so we have to be hydrated consistently. We all live in different areas and places of the world where the humidity is different. And so mm -hmm. water is evaporating from us all the time. And so keeping us hydrated through the day is so key, okay? And so that's what that's that's what D stands for. Now, S, I love talking about the sleep part, the S part in med sleep, because a lot of people are not getting good sleep, okay? And this has everything to do with how ener energized you feel. When we talk about sleep, I uh, and I talked about this with um, Dr. Kelly and the other day, I talk about something called stretch out sleep. And what stretch out sleep is, is making sure that Sometime in your weekly routine, you, if you can, if you uh, do more than one day, at least choose one day where you go to sleep and you get that maximum eight, nine hours sleep. Like you because wake up when you just naturally wake up. Exactly. You wake up naturally. And, you know, honestly, my, I, I sit, set up my schedule so I almost do that every day. And it mm -hmm. does wonders in terms of the way I look and the way I feel. And you really get an opportunity to have that healing, restorative energizing sleep when you do that. And so for some people based on their schedule, it might mean going to bed a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. or it might mean rearranging their day so that it starts a little bit later. Um, everyone's different. For some people, it, all they need is maybe six hours. I do recommend somewhere between six to nine hours. You know, everyone has a number uh, and everyone's number is different. For me, it's about eight and a half to nine hours, believe it or not. But here's the thing. When I get that sort of sleep, I am when I wake up, I'm up and I'm ready to go the entire day. And mm -hmm. I'm effective. It's mm -hmm. about being effective during the day. For some people, you may have to make your bedroom like a spa. Because when we go to a spa, when we go and get a massage or something like that, you have an environment where they usually have some type of subtle organic like music. The lights are low. They don't have some type of uh, newscast playing in the background. They don't have newspapers or bills spread out. No they have an environment. Time. Exactly. They have an environment. As soon as you walk in, your body wants to relax. It wants to exhale. It wants to take a deep breath. And you need that type of atmosphere in your bedroom. When people have racing thoughts, racing thoughts are one of the number one reasons why people don't get restorative sleep. Mm -hmm. It's important to have that type of environment. Plus, I'll go further. It's important to make sure you journalize and put a constructive answer to any racing thought that you have before bed. I have found in my practice that when my patients journalize and they put potential solutions to maybe something that they're worried about, even if that at the end of the day is not the answer, your body can deal with that and say, okay, that's a possible answer. We got a workflow going, we're working on something. I can rest and in the, mor in the morning, I'll pick it up and I'll figure out what's next. Instead of not providing an answer to racing thoughts, then you go to bed worried, you toss and turn, and you can't sleep. I want people to get sleep. I want people to have a restorative life. And that's one of the ways I do it. And that's what I tell people everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. I even actually like to do dream journaling. I'm one of those people that I have pretty vivid dreams. And it's like you could write these crazy movies on the dreams that I have. And it's kind of neat just like journaling and taking time to tune into that. There's something to be said for pen to paper. That's actually how I wrote my ebook and my, my next book that's coming out next year. I love just pen to paper, getting out in nature. Getting out in nature is really one of my favorite key steps as well. So I just have one final question for you here. How can tuning into our personal spiritual needs allow us to age better? Well, first of all, you know, like I was telling people, when I cast my cares as a Christian on the Lord, not worrying, not getting eliminating fear out of my life. I'm not saying that I don't have situations where I don't feel afraid, but then, you know, taking a Bible verse out and meditating on it until I get the fear out, until I get the anxiety out, until I have a vision or not a vision, but until I have like a visualization of how I can work through a problem at peace, at rest, not fearing, what that does is it causes me not to worry or fear and I feel relaxed. And what it does biochemically is, it, you know, it, if we measured it, it may potentially help lower cortisol, oh, which can help with uh, my DHEA stores and biochemically help my body physically be restored and physically feel at peace and physically be energized. But mentally, it helps me be at peace. 
And I think when people do not live an anxious, worried, fearful life, not only do I believe it helps longevity, but it helps them feel energized and it helps them stay goal oriented where they're motivated to live longer. When you get down, when you get depressed, when you get anxious, you know, sometimes you lose the reason why you want to live a long life. And sometimes you lose the reason to, you, you can lose hope to the point where you're just like, you know, listen, um, why does it matter if I live the next decade or the next, you know, whatever? You want to stay focused. You want to stay relaxed. When you do that, you'll look, you'll feel better, and you'll be more energized to do the energized life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just looking at you, you are glowing and radiating from the inside out. So I'm taking some notes out of your, your book, that's for sure. I love your move, eat, drink, sleep acronym. I think that's fantastic. So where can people find you? People can find me at jasonmd.com. I made it real simple, just my name, jasonmd.com. I'm based in Orlando, Florida. Uh, my office is 1803 Park Center Drive, Suite 111. And all of that's on the website. People can also follow me on Facebook, and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. And there are the links right on my uh, website page at jasonmd.com. And you'll find some awesome blogs there. And in fact, we have some exciting news coming up in about two weeks where we have our new website review and some new services that we're offering people. And I can't wait, I'm excited and I can't wait for people to get plugged in. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you also have a show that uh, we're gonna be going into just after this as well. Tell us a little bit about your show. Dr. Jason, the show, and that's what it's called. And you know, this is where I get the opportunity to interview people such as yourself who have, you know, just enormous backgrounds and who help people worldwide. And I get an opportunity and, you know, to say, Hey, listen, what are you, what are your tips? What separates uh, you from your colleagues and how can you help me and my clients and the rest of the world? And we get an opportunity to engage in that way that makes a difference. And I love when people hear that information, I feel like it's life changing and it makes a difference. And, you know, that's why I'm so excited to bring the Dr. Jason show to people. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Jason Littleton. It was a pleasure having you on here and sharing you on the Rachel Varga podcast, you know, my Facebook, YouTube and all of that. So thank you so much for sharing your message of how to live an energized and optimized life. So until next time. Thank we you. Will... It's an honor to be on here. I Absolutely. really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks so much for joining and have a great rest of your day.